Thank you very much, Mr. Siron. Our minister has since left. P.S. I'm later our CMO, Dr. Johnson, other heads of the Ministry of Health and the media, the management um, team for the press, the Prime Minister's um, press brief. Everybody, good morning. I'm a Hurricane Maria, damage, and really gave a beating to the environment. We had all the supporting elements of the, of, of the environment adversely affected. So we had our water system, we had our soil, we had our built up environment with all our buildings. And what this did, it exposed us, the residents of Dominica, the population, to a lot of disease pathogens and hazardous material and exposed us to the elements of the environment that can adversely affect us. In response to Hurricane Maria, the Environmental Health Department started with looking at our water. Because although persons can stay without food for a, a few days, water is essential every day. And we want to really say our hats off from the Ministry of Health to the WASCO and to our WASH team, which, which, which we work very closely with during the first two weeks to restore water back to the communities in Dominica. Um, the Wasco very quickly restored water to Roseau, where we have our highest density of population. And for that, we can say that maybe prevented us from really getting an outbreak of, of waterborne diseases. The WASH team is still out there providing us with water in areas where that water has not been restored. So we have, um, most of the health districts have a number of communities where water has been provided. And in the areas where the Wasco water is not provided. We actually have the um, persons from the wash team providing us with drinking water. So they truck drinking water on a daily basis to a number of the communities. We also had to try to get persons with less contact with the flood water. As we know, after a flood, we usually get an increase in diseases like leptospirosis. And that was one of our major aims, to get persons to have less contact with the flood water. Exposure to dust. So those first two weeks, we concentrated on water, exposure to flood water, and protection from the dust that was being generated because we, have, we had all the sand and, and dirt, especially in the city. During the third week, we had to move on to, to food safety because persons started um, opening facilities and we were mindful that with the type of um, situation, persons would not be clinging adequately and we still had a number of organisms maybe in some of those facilities. Some of them had no water, no proper storage. So we had to start with our food. So we came up with um, the situation where we started re-registering our food facilities and giving those who met standards a certificate of approval. This is ongoing, but it is now a situation that we have dealt with the emergency of those who opened without permission. And now we actually have a system in place where persons come in to inform us and we go out and do an inspection and determine whether they are ready. We have also been monitoring our shelters and we can say here this morning that oh, we have seen the shelters decreasing very rapidly, in fact, as people rehabilitate. We are also seeing the numbers in the shelters going down. So as persons return to their homes, we are seeing less persons at shelters. However, we continue to do daily monitoring of our shelters because as we know, when persons are in a crowded area, we also get the transmission of diseases. So we have to continue with our monitoring and surveillance of the shelters to ensure that they do have portable water, that they have means of sanitation, proper sanitation, and management of their waste. OK, we also have vector control. As you know, Dominica, um, dengue fever is endemic in Dominica. So we always have a few cases of, of dengue fever. And with the breeding places having in, been increased so much after, after Hurricane Maria, our role had, was to reduce the breeding areas. So although we had a lot of complaints about the increase in mosquitoes, 
which was mainly Culex, because we have the Aedes mosquito, which is very important to us in the Ministry of Health, because they transmit a number of diseases, as Dr. Johnson mentioned, um, dengue fever, chikungunya, Zika, all these are transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. We also have the Culex mosquito, which can transmit disease, but is not responsible for any disease in Dominica presently. But that is the mosquito that we are seeing in abundance. So the department has a team of persons and we are going around and actually treating some of the drains, getting some of them open, treating the basements. We did quite a bit of that. And as persons continue to complain that they have an increase in mosquitoes, we are doing assessments to find out where the breeding are and to really respond. So, so far we are keeping our fingers crossed as we, we have not yet seen an increase in the number of cases of mosquito-borne diseases and we are keeping our fingers crossed that it will remain that way. So one of the things I want to say to the listening public out there that we also depending on them as usual to get rid of the breeding around their environment. So in your homes, although we store much more water, we want persons to remember that they have to cover those drums. You have to turn over those um, appliances that can contain water and that can go on to breed mosquitoes. As we continue to work feverishly with solid waste and the, all other partners in removal of the waste that has accumulated after Maria. We also have been also looking at our rodent population and Thanks to the people from the government and people of Cuba, we were able to, to um, bait the entire, um, in fact, six of our health district, only La Plain was not baited. And from all reports, in fact, persons are coming to our department by droves to ask for the rat pillow, you know, because persons, it, 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 has, it has worked so well. And, you know, persons are so happy with, 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 the, with, with the way it works that they are actually asking for more. But unfortunately, we do not have any more of, of, of the bio rats. We now have weather blocks that we assist individuals with. Okay. Um, we, the environment, you know, we, in the environmental health department, we continue every day to get emergencies. We are now dealing a lot with occupational health and safety. So as the, as the days go by, we, we, we try to bring in another area of environmental health. Over the last two weeks, we have been dealing a lot with occupational health and safety as persons try to return to their homes and their institutions and they get sick on, on, on when they return. And we are, we are now dealing with our mold problem in our buildings. The, 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 the rain from Maria and the uncovered roof cause our, cause our buildings to have a lot of water. The water has, has adversely affected the buildings and what we are seeing now is the growth of molds. Now when molds grow, they can cause us to get ill. They, we get allergic reactions to the growth of molds and we, especially our respiratory systems gets affected and sometimes our skin we have a, a few steps. The people out there, everybody who has, um, who is affected with molds, there are a number of steps that we have to take. One of the first things we have to do is we have to stop the flow of the water, whichever water is affecting the building. So if it's our, through our roof, it's coming, then we need to cover our roof. If we are not able to use zinc material, we maybe need to get some tarpaulins, but we need to stop the water from coming into the building. If it's on the ground, we maybe need to do some drainage but we need to get the water. We do not need more water coming into the building. So we first of all have to stop the entry of the water. After we have stopped the entry of the water, we need to remove the things that have been infected with the moles. So we go through our building, make sure that we protect ourselves. We protect ourselves with um, protective gears. We use our mask, we use our gloves, we use our boots if we still have water, you know, and we remove the things that have been affected by the moles and the wet things if we have carpeting on the floor we need to remove it if we have cupboards with moles we need to remove them the paper we maybe need to put them in the sun to dry but we need to remove all the stuff that actually can cause the moles to go we remove and then we clean in cleaning we have free free chemicals that we use also free substances that we use we use pure vinegar we use burak in water and we use bleach in water. So we have this by a step-by-step -step 
process that the Ministry of Health has prepared a press release that we will be releasing maybe later. If not, if not today, well, early next week, we'll be releasing that actually gives you direction on how to go about doing everything that you need to do to get rid of the molds in your building. We will also, we are going a step further. We have asked um, the Caribbean Public Health Agency to assist us in doing some testing for the molds. So we might be getting a team coming down to Dominica to take some samples so we can be aware of the, the, the serotype of the, of the mold that is actually in our buildings in Dominica. So what we want to say to the public out there, if anybody has a reason and they want to get some information, they can contact us at the Environmental Health Department and we can give you direct information and we can maybe do an assessment for you and give you some information. We also want to say that once you have cleaned, it would be very good if you could come back to the Environmental Health Department to get an assessment and evaluation of what you did before you start using the, the, the building. Because what sometimes happens is that you get a relief for a few weeks and then if it was not properly done, then the molds might, might return. Okay? The minister spoke about the, our situation in Lubier. I just want to maybe talk a little bit about the situation, but maybe talk about some of the things that we in environmental health, in the Ministry of Health, recommended, and maybe some of the effects of what, what, the, what the ammonia could do to us, all right? Because in truth and in fact, we, we in the Ministry of, of Health found ourselves in a, in a situation where it was any, anything that we did would, could, could, could result in adverse, adverse effects. We, we had to make the decision whether to go along with approval of is choosing between the environment and the safety of the individual. As you know, the population would definitely be of, more, of, of greater priority. So we had to go along with getting rid of the ammonia. As the minister mentioned, we are getting rid of it in a solution form because ammonia has a pH of 14, which is the high scale on the, on, when you look at the pH scale, the highest on the, when it comes to base, alkaline. Okay, and if it gets in contact with anything, any acidic chemical, which they have, or they also have, um, in the compound because we have other chemicals in the compound that we are going to be working with them to, to also dispose of. It can cause a lot of damage and it would be, maybe result in death of our people in that area. So we had to take the decision to dilute the ammonia and dispose of it. It is an acceptable um, system of disposal for, for the ammonia gas. You bring down the pH, they wanted, they, they, you know, we had some of the things we asked them to do um, is to make sure that they brought down the pH to eight. They wanted to to have it a little higher, but we our standards in Dominica say eight because at eight we will not have things like fish kill, and we didn't really want to have fish kill in our river, so we asked that they bring it down to eight. We also asked that the temperature be not more than thirty degrees because we did not want Celsius. We did not want to have any. And the temperature also affecting the fish, higher it might end up with. The standard is 33, but we wanted to ensure that our fish life remains safe, so we asked them to bring it down to 30. Okay, we are also doing monitoring of, 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 the, of, the, of, of the water to ensure that the pH is at 8 or below, and we will be doing that every 20 feet. At every 20 feet, we will be, we will be measuring the the temperature and the pH. We ask also that the, 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 the flow of the flow rate of the river to make sure that we have the river the capacity to, to receive, the receiving um, environment has the capacity to, re, to receive the 113 gallons of, of ammonia that we have. Okay, so we can say that the community was alerted, the community was evacuated. And they are uh, we presently we have a team of persons on the ground doing monitoring and working closely with the with the persons who are doing that. Uh, I just want to say we found ourselves in a very difficult situation. The action that we take can have environmental consequences. Um, however, if we did not dispose immediately, we could have had 
consequences to the population, which we definitely did not want to happen. So we had to make this choice. Okay. Um, we just want to say to the people out there that all precautions are, is being taken and we are keeping our fingers crossed that everything will go well. Okay, so we in environmental health, we continue with our monitoring and surveillance because our role as environmental health is to protect the, pub, the, the public's health and everything that we do is in an effort to ensure that persons do not come down with disease. So we will continue to go out there and to do what we are supposed to do. We want to continue to ask for the support of the general public. You know, we every time we come to your to your place, we are coming to try to uh, help you. We also want to ask the persons who have um, animal pens, pig pens and fowl pens, a number of them will, will, will create in nuisances in the environment before Maria. And we noticed that persons wanted to quickly rebuild those things. So we are now working with persons to really ask them to come back to the department and, you know, ask to build, you know, make a make a proposal bring us a, your plans bring us your area where you're going to it so we can do an assessment and we can give you we can see whether you can build in the environment that you are going to build you know because they can create a number of nuisances that we continue to get complaints about we also have our garages that are usually set up sometimes without planning permission and therefore they are in an environment that they are not supposed to be we also ask the persons whose um, garages has been destroyed to contact the environmental health um, department so that we can do assessment so that we can give you some recommendations on what you can do. So once again, I want to say thank you to the people from the, the management of the Prime Minister's brief for the opportunity to address the people of Dominica. And we will continue to do the things that we are supposed to be doing. Thank you.